I need to ask millennials, um, why are your kids so awful? And more importantly, why do you think it's so funny? Don't give a baby an iPad. Did I hurt the millennials feelings? I'm so sorry. Teachers are quitting their jobs because your kids are awful and you guys are enablers. I'm gonna just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. Having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life. What world do we live in? Your five-year-old daughters are asking to listen to Pound Town. My most controversial take is that I think that millennials are worse parents than boomers. You can't even go to a damn library without hearing the muffled sound of cocoa melon blasting through sticky residue. That's your heart. You see, the thing is, is millennials are raising Gen Alpha. And we did not come to play. They're going to be ruthless. Girl, your kids can't even spell ruthless. Anyways, so many millennial parents are being called out not only by Gen Z, but also teachers that are teaching their Gen Alpha kids. And millennial parents literally do not care. Do better. Hello everybody, it is me, Salem, and welcome back to my Chanel. How was your guys' Thanksgiving? Was the food good? Was there drama? Was there cheese man? Let me know in the comments down below. My family holidays have been filled with nothing but love, light, and blessings. Like, my life is so boring now. But a lot has happened since I've been gone. Um, first things first, Colleen Ballinger is back. Clap if you care. <laughs> All right, let's move on. I think I'm a Swifty now. Then Dream got absolutely bodied by the voice actor who voices Gumball. And apparently everyone's taking Gumball's side. Nothing brings Gen Z closer than finding someone to hate. And most recently, the topic that is bringing Gen Z together is their hatred for millennials. But more specifically, millennial parenting. I need to ask millennials, um, why are your kids so awful? And more importantly, why do you think it's so funny? Teachers are quitting their jobs because your kids are awful and you guys are enablers. I'm gonna just say this. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. Having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life. What world do we live in? Your five-year-old daughters are asking to listen to Pound Town. That's your heart. You see, the thing is, is millennials are raising Gen Alpha, and we did not come to play. They're going to be ruthless. Despite there being so much talk from teachers and nurses and parents all grouping together to tell them, hey, you're kind of raising iPad addicted, Cheeto finger infested, severely disrespectful, short attention span, skibbity toilet gremlins. They are doubling down so hard and will not accept the fact that many of them are very bad at parenting. Instead of these millennial parents sitting down their kids and teaching them emotional intelligence, social awareness. They are relying on an iPad to raise their kids. But surprisingly, I don't actually think it's only the iPad to blame. There is a huge lack of support in general for millennials to be the best parents that they can be in today's society, which is causing a lot of burnout for these parents. And that burnout is definitely heavily affecting Gen Alpha and we can see it. So this video is going to deep dive into a lot. So get comfy, wear your favorite pajamas, get your favorite snack and let's get into this but before we get into today's video y'all know the drill i gotta pay my bills because now i actually have to buy christmas presents full price because black friday was a complete flop thank you here's today's sponsors our first sponsor is jenny kane you guys know i've worked with jenny kane for a while now and i genuinely love this brand and honestly it's perfect timing because winter is right around the corner and my wardrobe could definitely use a refresher or more so a a warm Escher because it's gonna be really cold. Our listeners get 25% off their first order. Use our exclusive link at jennykane.com to get 25% off. Jenny Kane is known for their super luxurious yet lightweight sweaters, which really, really helps me. Someone who wants to be warm during the winter, but also doesn't wanna be like burning hot to the point where I get uncomfortable. And they come in such good quality that you know it will last. It's very simple, focusing on comfort, quality, and timeless design. So you can create a wardrobe that never goes out of style and 
is still comfortable. So gift yourself and your loved ones the best gift of all, Jenny Kane. Our listeners get 25% off your first order when you use exclusive link jennykane.com forward slash Salem. 25% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com slash Salem. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. All right, first ad read done. Let's go on to our second and last sponsor. Shout out to our second sponsor, which is Factor. You're in the holiday season, which means that you are probably extremely busy. And because you're extremely busy, it's probably causing making food be a little bit harder. But with Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal delivery service, can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef repaired, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door, which can help you save time and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. You can treat yourself to high quality, delicious meals over the holidays, choosing from 35 and more chef crafted meals every week that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences you can do calorie smart vegan veggie protein plus and more wholesome options and for a lot of you guys who don't know i have been trying to really focus on my health the factor is something that's really cool look into if you want that boost in your health journey head to factormeals.com slash salem tovar 50 and use code salem tovar 50 to get 50 percent off that's code salem tovar 50 at factormeals.com slash salem tovar 50 to get 50 percent off Anyways, let's get into today's video. Part 1. Millennials have a major parenting problem, and they don't want to admit it. But in order to first understand why millennials are parenting the way they parent, we first have to do a deep dive on how their parents raised them, and how both parenting styles don't work. Millennials were born between 1981 to 1996, and they came of age around the 2000s. Millennials then gave us classics such as every problematic YouTuber ever, Buzzfeed, being obsessed with the show Friends, angsty teen Tumblr edits, emo Disney princess edits, but they also gave us amazing things like Jersey Shore, and my favorite, Rhett and Link, and let's not forget Dan and Phil. But that was the early days of their existence. Now, now, as a Gen Zer who is probably around my age, you guys know them to be more so being cringe, obsessed with decorating their homes in the most boring decor you could ever see, family vlogging, liking Hamilton, and having iPad kids. At first, it was a lot of Gen Zers calling out millennials for their bad parenting, and a lot of millennials were using the <laughs> just wait till you have kids defense mechanism on a lot of people. So then actual people who work with their kids started to come out and talk about how horrible it is to work with their kids. A lot of these kids don't respect authority whatsoever. They can't read. These kids lack an insane amount of emotional regulation to the point where everything is a tantrum and a screaming match with them. And this is something that we hear every single generation, right? The younger generation is just so disrespectful. Those are common themes that we see every time there's a new generation of kids coming up. Unlike in other generations, it only being the older generations talking down to the youngest generation, it's now the youngest and oldest banding together to really try to sediment the concern of parenting going Going on in these millennial homes to these millennial parents. In order for us to really examine why millennials are parenting the way that they are parenting, we first need to examine their parents. Boomers and Gen Xers are famously known to have the type of parenting style of corporal punishment and authoritarian parenting style. But unfortunately, a lot of millennials were exposed to this type of parenting, obeying and listening to authority no matter what. You have everything. You have food and a bed and a house. Why aren't you happy? This is an example of this type of parenting style where they don't really understand that you have emotional needs too because they assume that because you're getting your physical needs met, that should be enough for you to be happy. So instead, many millennials have turned their heads to something called gentle parenting. The four pillars of gentle parenting are empathy, respect, understanding, and boundaries. Millennials becoming obsessed with gentle parenting should be no surprise to any of us because it is the exact opposite of what they were raised with. With every generation, the pendulum swings from one extreme to the other. Boomers and Gen Xers were hugely authoritarian to the point where it was just straight up neglect. Now, millennials are focusing on gentle parenting where there is no correct whatsoever. These cannot be the same kids y'all are gentle parenting. I'm sorry, it can't. People aren't executing it correctly. There is lots of permissiveness in the child's bad behavior.
behavior. Second, there is a huge lack of resilience on the, and how the kid can handle life situations or negative emotions. Three, it stunts their ability to interact with the real world, which we see all the time with Gen Alpha. I feel like because of the fear of correction and what millennial parents think correction looks like because of their boomer parents, they don't know healthy ways to correct or guide their kids. Some of them just don't correct at all. And in a lot of these TikToks of teachers and Gen Zers who, who have volunteered to work with Gen Alpha, they constantly said that many times when they wanted to bring up a negative behavior of a kid in their class to the parent, the parent defended the bad behavior of the child every single time. I told a young little girl, please sit in your spot. You're not my mom, you don't tell me what to do. Okay. When our mom came to pick her up, I said, hey, your daughter's having a hard time following instructions and seven times today I've had to redirect her to just sit in her spot. Well, clearly she didn't want to sit, and mind you, this is a mom, clearly she didn't want to fucking sit right there. So, I mean, if she's telling you she don't want to do something, why keep asking her to do it? You know she's not going to do it. What world do we live in? Like, what in you guys' brain as a parent says, hmm, my kid not following any directions is a, is a great thing. It's not that serious and y'all don't have a right to tell her what to do. It's sad. Y'all are literally creating mini Karens. It's crazy. And believe it or not, this type of parenting can still have its very negative side effects on children. Not properly guiding your child or healthily correcting their behavior and letting them lash out and be little and bully other people at such a young age not only exasperates all this negative behaviors and tantrums, but it also shows that you do not care about them. You don't care for their betterment. You don't care about their personal growth. I always see millennial parents say that they're just exhausted and burnt out to the point where they themselves don't even know what to do for their kids bad behavior they themselves are on the brink of becoming mentally and physically exhausted so many of these millennial parents are giving up on their children because they're giving up on themselves Part two, this world is becoming less and less child friendly. Well, in general, it's kind of becoming less human friendly. The economy is horrible and millennials are definitely feeling the pressure and it shows through their Being kids. Being burnt out to do anything in life is valid. Being alive in general is so tiring. So I can't imagine people keeping another life alive and happy, making sure they're physically okay and emotionally okay. It's a really, really hard job to have. But I think it's even harder nowadays because of the lack of support parents have in general. Parents are not prioritizing themselves at all because they literally can't. The American dream of having the nuclear family and white picket fence is completely impossible because first of all no one can afford the white picket fence but second this economy is requiring for a lot of parents to both work which means that there is an extreme lack of financial security which can put such stress on parents to overwork thus coming home stressed out and having less time with their kids and when they do need time to unwind they resort to giving their kids an ipad to distract them so they have a little bit of a breather and obviously that comes at its cost so obviously you're probably wondering so what is the solution it seems like there's nothing that can be done because someone has to be sacrificing something engagement with the child or the expense of a parent's physical and mental health well this usually happens in individualistic cultures it's at times like these where it takes a village if you ever heard the saying it takes a village this refers to living in a collectivist culture where everyone kind of shares responsibility for everything but because of us being in you know now 2023 we have now become a lot more individualist the culture being all about hustle culture and a lot of millennials kind of have this dissonance with this concept where they just think that as soon as they have a kid the world is going to bow to their every whim and make sure that this kid is completely taken care of as if we live in a collectivist culture but again we we don't at all so to automatically think that the world is going to embrace your kids with open arms is very ignorant and just so dumb obviously there are things that you can do to build stronger community so that you can have breaks and rest but the number one thing that you can do as a parent is setting boundaries with your kid the amount of times i have seen people making fun of gentle parenting or ranting about gentle parenting and how it doesn't work and that it causes parents to feel emotionally and physically burn out so fast fast because of how emotionally draining and tasking it so is. So they have to quote unquote resort to giving the kid an iPad so I can have a breather is sad. Fucking 
parenting is hard. Hello. Because gentle parenting is all about giving the absolute most that you have into empathizing and meeting every single emotional need of your child, you are not getting any of your emotional needs met, which is making you resort to the crappiest, laziest parenting because you are in survival mode and don't even know it. I've been gentle parenting for the last couple of years and today was one of the hardest days. I was trembling holding back my tears, sweating out of frustration, anger. It took all of me to stick to gentle parenting today, guys. There are so many options and better ways to go about parenting in a non-collectivist culture that both meets the needs of your child and you. Make self-care with them interactive. Let kids be bored. Look for better options first before resorting to the iPad. And if you feel like you have to resort to giving your kid an iPad to refrain from completely blowing up because you feel like you keep giving your absolute all to be emotionally available, maybe it's time to switch up your parenting style because it's causing you to burn out even quicker Quicker. and sedating your child's bad behavior with an iPad because you can't handle it will only repeat this bad behavior, thus making you more miserable. I know that me giving all these suggestions and talking about all of this and deep diving about parenting while I am a childless person, despite me having a degree in education and family relationships, even that will not be enough for some of these millennial parents right now watching this to take anything that I'm saying into consideration. I already know that this video is going to be swamped with just wait till you have kids and that's what I said until I had a kid and to that I say <gasps> Part three and final part, the Gen Z pact, learning from the mistakes of others. Recently, there was a video that went insanely viral. This video got 18.2 million views and almost 5 million likes. It was posted by a TikTok user named Gabe Sko. And in this TikTok, he proposes a promise that all Gen Z should adhere to about not raising iPad kids and not raising our future kids, like how millennials are raising them. I need everybody else in my generation to promise that we are not gonna raise iPad children, please. I just saw a TikTok from some millennial and she was like, Here's a message to Gen Z. You might make fun of us, but watch out. We're raising the next generation and they're gonna eat you up. Your kids can't read, okay? You're raising Gen Alpha. They're bizarre and terribly behaved. Y'all bred iPad children. You have been shoving media and screens in these kids' faces since birth. They probably have no imagination because their brain hasn't actually been forced to come up with any original thought. Gen Z, please, when we are older, don't give your kids iPads at the dinner table. As a Gen Z, I had to teach my Gen Alpha siblings how to read because no one else did. 50k likes. Another comment says, I will never raise an iPad kid. Ever. The responses from other millennial parents to this comment were so petty and so bitter. The childless children commenting don't know. We do need breaks here and there. All in moderation. Don't listen to these childless fools. They don't understand. I said I wouldn't be like that, but then I actually had kids. Sometimes you just need a break and it's better to give them a distraction while you gather yourself instead of blowing up. I have a favor to ask of millennials who are watching this, who are parents and who are also being the type of parent who continuously denies that their parenting is bad. Can you stop boomerfying parenthood the way boomers did to marriage? Because you sound exactly the same as them. The amount of times people always use the excuse of, wait till you have kids, you're gonna hate it. It reminds me of those bitter ass people in bitter ass marriages who would come up to me when I got engaged and they would dead ass tell me and look at me in the eye and be like, don't get married. It's gonna be the worst mistake of your life. And now fast forward to me actually being married. My husband and I cook together. My husband is actually cleaner than me. Like, no, the only reason why people project onto other people who are barely getting into that next stage of their life is because they have already failed and they are jealous that you have an opportunity to do it better. It's such a boomer thing to hate marriage and now millennials are boomerfying the hatred of parenthood. And it's really discouraging and it's really annoying. When in reality, if you actually work to be better, find better alternatives, just like in a marriage to make it work and be happy, same thing is applied to a family unit with kids. And um, a reminder, Gen Z are already parents. 
and so are other millennials and a lot of them are actually succeeding in parenthood so it is possible there isn't a time limit to when you can step in as a parent and do a better job so to put down and discourage future parents current parents and long-term parents who are just trying to find different ways to parent outside of what you would normally do and what you see as right is really immature especially if it's coming from a place where they're seeing that the current parenting in the world today isn't working and also a part of that maturity is being able to step back and realize that there are some things that can be done better and it's okay for the newer generations to point that out and learn from other generations past mistakes just as millennials did to boomers with their parenting style and also being mature is supporting them in that not manifesting ill will towards their future kids and parenthood like how many boomers did to millennials accepting criticism is a really important thing especially if said criticism is coming from a multitude of people who are working with your kids one-on-one -on -one all the time and to respond to that valid criticism with defensiveness angriness and putting other people down and wishing bad upon future parents isn't going to fix your kid from crying screeching out loud at olive garden when they can't have their tablet out on full volume it just takes extra effort and it takes extra work but it is worth it children are incapable of viewing the world outside of anything other than what their parents put in front of them but that's the problem their parents aren't putting the world in front of them they're putting an ipad all right guys that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and if you watch this video in its entirety comment down a duck emoji down below so i know that you watched the entire thing make sure that you press subscribe so that you get a notification from me as well as the bell notification so you guys know when i post in my community post comment down below what your guys's opinion is on this whole thing if you guys want to follow me on instagram go ahead and do that it's at underscore salem tovar underscore on my instagram and before i leave i always give my viewers homework so homework for you guys this week is to enjoy today after you watch this video that is ironically on the internet put your phone down your tablet down turn off the computer whatever and go touch grass all right guys that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye